Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Kleena here and today I'm going to be taking you through the solution to question 5 from this Leaving Cert higher level paper. This question is based on integration and algebra and it's worth 30 marks. So let's get right into it. In question A we're told that g of x is equal to x squared minus 1 over x where x is a real number and we're told to find the derivative of g of x g dash x. The first thing that I do when I come across an equation to be derived where there's 1 over x here, because I always find it easier, right? So 1 over x can be written as x to the power of minus 1, okay? And similarly, 1 over x squared can be written as x to the power of minus 2, and so on. So I'm just going to write out this line here. g of x I'm going to rewrite as is equal to x squared minus x to the power of minus 1. So now I'm going to start to derive it. So g dash x, the derivative, is equal to, so I'm going to bring the 2 down here, 2x and then take away 1 from the power. So that's to the power of 1, so we can just leave it as 2x, minus, bring down this here, minus 1, x, and then reduce this by 1, so it's going to be to the power of minus 2. Now because you have a double negative here, that becomes a positive, so g dash x is going to be 2x plus x to the power of minus 2. Now you can leave it as it is, or you can rewrite this as 2x plus 1 over x squared. So as this rule goes, you can also do it in reverse. So x to the power of minus 2 goes to 1 over x squared. So this is our answer here, 2x plus 1 over x squared. And you're going to get 5 marks for deriving this. Now let's move on to part b. So we're told that f of x is equal to 2x to the power of 3 minus 21x squared plus 40x plus 63. And part i tells us that x plus 1 is a factor of f of x. And we're asked to find three values of x for which f of x is equal to zero. First of all, it asks us for three values, but they've already given us one. So if x plus one is a factor of f of x, that means that x plus one is equal to zero. So x is equal to minus one is a value for x when f of x is equal to zero. What we're going to want to do is, so remembering that this is a factor, or this is a value for x, we're going to divide f of x by x plus 1 to get a quadratic. So we're going to get something x squared plus something x plus a constant. So that's going to be our quadratic. And then we're going to factorize that to find two more values of x. So let's get started with that. So we have 2x to the power of 3 minus 21x squared plus 40x plus 63. And that is divided by x plus 1 because we know it's a factor x into 2x third is going to be 2x squared. 2x squared multiplied by x is 2x to the power of 3. 2x squared multiplied by 1 is plus 2x squared. We're going to change the signs here so we can cancel the 2x to the power of 3. So we can cancel these. Minus 21x squared minus 2x squared is going to be minus 23x squared. I'm going to bring down this guy here plus 40x. Now we divide in again, x into minus 23x squared is minus 23x. Minus 23x multiplied by x is minus 23x squared. Minus 23x multiplied by 1 is minus 23x. Now let's change the signs again so we can cancel. So we're going to change this into a positive sign and this also into a positive sign. So now let's cancel here and we have 40x plus 23x. So we're going to be left with 63x and we're going to bring down this 63 here plus 63. x into 63x is plus 63. 63 multiplied by x is 63x. 63 multiplied by 1 is plus 63. Change the signs here, minus and minus, and then we can cancel those. So we can see that our quadratic equation is 2x to the power of 2 minus 23x plus 63. We can let that equal to 0. Now let's find two more values of x using this quadratic. This is one of the slightly more difficult quadratics where it's not very obvious which factors you're going to use. I'm going to multiply 2 by 63 to get 126. So now we're going to have to find the factors of 126, which make up 23. Come naturally, this isn't on the top of my head. So I used my calculator to go through all the factors, right? So first of all, I divided it by 2. 2 multiplied by 63 is 126. Now you're not going to make minus 23 out of 2 and 63. So that wouldn't work. 3 multiplied by 42. So I divided 126 by 3 to get 42. Again, you're not going to be able to get minus 23 out of that. So I kept going up in the numbers, okay, until I found 
found that if you divided 126 by 9, you got 14. So 9 and 14, that is going to get us minus 23. So minus 9 multiplied by minus 14, okay, double negative gives you a positive 126. And it also gives you minus 23 when you add them. Now we have our 2x squared minus 14x minus 9x plus 63 is equal to 0. So let's take out 2x here. 2x, we're left with x minus 7. And here I'm going to take out minus 9. And we're left with x minus 7. Because when you divide minus 9 into 63, you get minus 7 is equal to 0. So now 2x minus 9 multiplied by x minus 7 is equal to 0. So 2x minus 9 is equal to 0. 2x is equal to 9. x is equal to 9 divided by 2. And x minus 7 is equal to 0. Okay, this bracket here. x is equal to 7. Okay, and we can clear this up. 9 divided by 2 is 4.5. So x is equal to 4.5. So we have x is equal to 4.5, x is equal to 7, and x is equal to, I think it was minus 1. I'm just going to double check there. Yes, x is equal to minus 1. So that's all for this question, and it is worth 15 marks. So now let's move on to B part 2, which is the final part of the whole question. So in B part 2, we're asked to find the range of values of x for which f dash of x, or the derivative of f of x, is negative, correct to two decimal places. The first thing we're going to do is rewrite f x here, which we know from our last question. So f of x was 2x to the power of 3 minus 21x squared plus 40x plus 63. So the first thing we're going to do is derive this. So find f dash of x. So 3 multiplied by 2, 6x squared, because you reduce the power by 1. 2 multiplied by minus 21 is going to be minus 42, and you reduce the power, so it's just x to the power of 1. Here the power is 1, so you multiply that by 40, and you just get plus 40. Reduce the power, so it's x to the power of 0, which is just 1, so we leave it as 40. And we can forget about the constant term here. Now we're asked to find the range of values of x, for which this f dash of x is negative, so it's less than 0. Notice that it says correct to two decimal places. Now this is the most obvious hint that you're going to be using the minus b formula. So we're going to go to our log tables to find this minus b formula. So here we have the algebra page of our log tables, which is page 20. So we have the roots of the quadratic equation, and here it is, x is equal to minus b plus or minus b squared, the root of b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a. So I'm just going to write out the minus b formula here, so I have it handy. So minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a. And just to remind you what a, b, and c are in this context, a is the coefficient of x squared, b is the coefficient of x, and c is the constant term. So a is 6, b is minus 42 and c is a 40. So let's fill this out. So minus b is minus minus 42, so it's just going to be 42, plus or minus b squared, which is 42 squared, or minus 42 squared is going to be the same answer, which is 1764, minus 4 multiplied by a, which is 6, multiplied by c, which is 40. And then you divide that by 2a, which is 2 times 6, which is 12. So that is 42 plus or minus, and I'm going to work out what's inside the square root. So it's 804 inside the square root. So 42 plus or minus the square root of 804 divided by 12. Now let's find two values for x here. So the first value of x is going to be 42 plus root 804 divided by 12. So x is equal to, I'm going to pop this into the calculator, and that is 5.8629. And now for the second value, it's going to be 42 minus root 804 divided by 12 is equal to x is equal to. Now, just a tip when you're going through this, instead of putting it all into the calculator again, just press the back button and go right along until you get to the addition sign. Press delete and add in a minus sign instead. And we get an answer of 1.137. First of all, we're going to find the values of x, and then we're going to find the range of values. So x is equal to, correct to two decimal places, it's going to be 5.86, and here x is equal to 1.14. So now we're finding the range of values for which it's negative. So we're going to put the lowest value first. So 1.14 is less than x is less than 5.86, and this is your range of values for which x is negative. The derivative of f of x is negative. So that is worth 10 marks, and that is this whole question 
finished. So thank you very much for listening guys. I hope that you found this video beneficial and I'll see you all in the next video.